Hello everyone. I've got a complex Atwood machine that I'd like to solve for you. This Atwood machine is going to be made of basically two uniform cylinders of MI, mass MI and MO for inner and outer and two differing radii. Of course, the inner radius one will have a radius R sub A and the outer radius one will have a radius of R sub capital B. And the smaller one will have a mass of big M hanging off of it. And a, uh, the larger one will have a mass of small M hanging off of it. And I am going to assume that I know M, big M, M sub I, M sub O, R sub A, R sub B, uh, and all that good stuff. And I'm going to try to solve for the individual tensions and the individual accelerations. The tensions I'll label TL and TR for T left and T right and the accelerations AL and AR for A left and A right, and also the angular acceleration, which I'll just call alpha. And that's gonna be the same for both of them because if the uh, two pulleys are mounted, attached to each other, then every degree one moves, the other one will move. So the angular measures are gonna be the same, uh, but because their radii are different, you get a different acceleration. So let me turn on my document cam to the actual problem. You can see here you have basically the outer pulley. And since the moment of inertia is one half MRS, M sub I R A squared, that's just the moment of inertia for a, a, for a uniform cylinder, basically. And you can see it's that for both of them. So M O R B squared, M O is the mass of the bigger outer uh, cylinder and M I is the mass of the smaller inner cylinder. We're probably not even gonna make use of that. I'll just leave it in terms of I, but I just wanted to show you a, a nice application where you could use it and just add the moments of inertia. We're assuming we know M, the little mass, big M, the big mass, M I, M O, R A and R B, and we're asked to find all these variables. So first thing I'm gonna do is draw a free body diagram for this object. I'm gonna go on the assumption that this object being the larger mass, even though it's got the smaller lever arm, I want to assume that that's big enough to overcome the lever arm issues and it's going to accelerate this way. And then I'll treat that way downward as positive. That means, of course, that this way upward is positive as well. And also means that a counterclockwise torque is going to be positive and a clockwise torque will be negative. So let's start by drawing my mass big M in a free body diagram. So there's big M. Uh, again, I'm calling the downward direction the actual positive direction. So I am going to take and draw in the green direction, big M G, and I'm calling that the positive direction of whatever coordinate I'm using, okay? Now, according to this mass m, it would like to just fall at the rate of 9.8 meters per second every second, but it feels this tension tugging on it, slowing it down. So that means the tension on the left-hand side, which I'm going to call T sub L, is pulling that way. So that's my free body diagram. That actually allows me to write the F equals MA equation. So in this case, I'm going to say M G minus T sub L is equal to big M A. And that's going to be A sub L because again, if this moves an inch, that one's not necessarily going to move an inch because an inch on here is just a, a large part of a turn, whereas it's a very small part of a turn over here. So we know those are possibly different. So I'll put a one on that. That's my equation one. Now I'm going to draw a free body diagram for mass little m. Now, again, anything consistent with the big M going down is the positive direction. So that means the little M going up is also the positive direction. So I'll draw MG pointing up. Or excuse me, I will draw TL pointing up. Actually, I said TL. This is actually going to be TR because it's on the right-hand side. That one's pointing up, and that's my positive direction again. And now I'm going to draw MG pointing down. That's a negative direction. So that's lowercase m times g. So for this equation, I end up getting TL, or excuse me, uh, TR minus little m g is equal to little m a sub r. That's going to be equation two. And now I'm going to draw a free body diagram 
for the actual pulleys. And what you're going to see is you have one pulley like this and another pulley like this. And of course, this one has consistent with the positive direction has a pulley TL pulling downward on it. So I'm going to say TL is this way. Uh, I said I was going to say TL, but I wrote TR. And then, of course, it's got a TR pulling downward on it this way. And that's a negative direction. So that's a TR. So now the summation of the torques is equal to I times alpha is the equivalent of Newton's laws. So I'm going to, uh, Newton's second law. So I'm going to actually write that now as this one's a positive one. So I'm going to say R A times T L minus R B times T R is equal to I, and that's just the I that I have over here times alpha. And as I said, the alpha is the same for everything because if this turns 30 degrees, then this one's also going to turn 30 degrees because we're assuming that basically this is glued to the other one or they're actually made out of the same piece of material. Uh, this will be equation three. Now, you see that we have an unknown TL, an unknown TR, an unknown AL, an unknown AR, and an unknown alpha. So that's like five unknowns. Obviously, for five unknowns, you need five equations. Well, it turns out you can also relate uh, the fact that alpha is a constant by saying, remember, uh, if S equals R times theta, then you have V is equal to R times omega. R, you also have A is equal to R times alpha. So with that in mind, we can say, well, alpha is going to always be A over R. So I can say alpha, which is uh, A sub L, over and remember a sub l is related to ra so that's the ra but that's also equal to a sub r over rb so i've got yet another equation uh equation four and you can actually sort of see this as equation four and five because alpha is equal to that that's one equation and then that's equal to that that's another equation so it's four and or five so this is actually really all we need to go about solving the problem. Uh, it takes a little bit of uh, practice and trial and error and stuff like that to learn the best ways to solve these. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, solve equation one for uh, basically the equivalent of RA times TL. So uh, I can do that by multiplying through by RA and then solving for TL. So let's do that as follows. So uh, multiply multiply one by, and again, the TL is here, the TL is there, so I need to multiply by RA and solve for RA times TL. And I think you can see why, because if I have RA times TL, then I've got this portion of equation three. So if I solve for RA times TL, then I'll have that and I can do the same thing with the other equation. So first off, I'll multiply by equation uh, one and I'll get RA MG minus RA TL is equal to R M A R A times M times a sub L. And then of course, now I can solve for R A T L. So I'm gonna say R A T L. If I pull it to this side, it's gonna become positive. And then this will become negative over there. So I'm gonna say R A times G times M over here. And then R A times M as well. So I'll just factor out a common big M there, and this one will be G. And when I pull this over here, this is gonna become minus AL. So I'll call this equation five. So now I've got an expression for RA times TL, and this is actually supposed to be a R capital A. I don't know why I wrote a lowercase A, but let me fix it to be sure. So there's a RA. Now I've got that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with two. 
to do Okay, so by same thing, in other words, I want, this one's got a TR in it, so I want a RB times TR, so I'm going to multiply the equation by RB, so uh, by RB, which is this one, so I'm going to say RB times TR minus RB times lowercase mg is equal to M, uh, actually that's supposed to be an R first, did I get the R on the other side? Yeah, I did, good. So this would be a RB times M times A sub R. So now I can solve for this and get equation six, which is going to be RB TR is equal to, notice I again have a common factor of RB and M, the R in other words, and the M. And in this case, it's going to be A sub R this is minus, it's gonna come over here and be a plus, so it'll be plus G. So that'll be equation uh, six. Now, if I put this in for RBTR and this in for RATL, then my unknowns will be AL, AR, and alpha. But I can avoid all that by making them all into AL. So let's, uh, let's do that. So I'm going to take equation four and I'm going to recognize that alpha is in fact equal to uh, AL over RA. And I'm going to recognize that AR is going to be equal to RB over RA times AL. And I'm going to plug these into, into three and six. So if I plug this into three, I'm going to get RATL. So that's this. So I'll say RAM times G minus AL, and then RBTR. Well, RBTR is just RB. Notice that's a minus, so I'll say minus RB, lowercase m. I'm going to switch the order of these just for convenience. I'm going to say G plus. Now I'm going to replace the AR with RB over RA times AL. So that is now an equation in terms of AL. Notice I got AL on both sides. That's the only unknown. And I can do the same thing, of course, in, oh, I've already done that actually. Uh, this is going to be equal to I times A. Uh, and I is just plain I, excuse me, I times alpha. And now this alpha here, I'm going to replace that with AL over RA. So I'm going to say AL over RA. And now I've got an equation whose only unknown is A sub L. So I'm going to multiply, distribute all these uh, factors and, and negative signs, and then get all the ALs on one side, and then I'll be able to solve for AL. Uh, so I have actually the first acceleration that we're trying to solve for. So when I multiply all this out, I'm going to get R A M G minus R A M. AL, that's RAM times negative AL. Now this negative is going to be negative RB, lowercase m, G, negative RB times RB over RA times AL, oh, let's out the M, times M times AL, and then equals I uh, over RA times AL. So now I see I've got a AL here, an AL here, and an AL here. I'd like them all on the same side. I'm going to put them all over to that side. That's going to leave me RAMG minus RB lowercase mg. So that takes care of that guy and that guy. 
And then over here, I'm going to have equals I over RA. And then when I pull this over here, this is going to become positive. So I'll say plus RB squared over RA times M. And then when I pull, so I'll take care of that one. And then when I pull this one over here, that'll be positive as well. So I'll say plus RAM. And again, that's times AL. So I'll go ahead and factor out that common A sub L. And finally, I can write A sub L is going to be equal to, uh, I actually would make it nice by multiplying through by RA first. So I'm actually going to do that. So if I multiply through by RA first, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to become RA squared. This is going to become RA, RB. So I'll say RA times, uh, let's do big M, RA squared. And this will be minus M times RA, RB. So you can see the units are working out right. Now RA times all this, that's going to get rid of that one. And that one is going to make that one squared. So when I divide through, I'm going to get I plus uh, M RB squared plus R A squared M. And then, of course, I've factored out all the G's in here. So all this will be times G. So that's our acceleration on the left-hand side. Uh, that's about as simple as I can make it. But in fact, if you consider the two radiuses equal to each other, then you can see that'd be R squared and R squared and R squared and R squared. Uh, and if you consider the moment of inertia to be zero for the pulleys, and that's just going to be zero. So the R squareds will cancel out and I'll get M minus M over M plus M times G, which is exactly the acceleration we got for the regular Atwood machine. Now, if I wanted to do A sub R, well, A sub R is just RB over RA times A sub L. So all I have to do is multiply through this and I'm going to say, all right, well, AR is going to be equal to now I'm gonna fly this by RA in the bottom. That's gonna cancel out one of those and I'll get big M RA times RB. And then this is gonna cancel out that RA and it's gonna be minus M RB squared. This down here will stay the same. Uh, actually, this one was supposed to be big M over here. Sorry about that. Notice that was a big M, but it digressed. So I have RA squared times big M, again, times G. So now I've got the acceleration on the right-hand side. Again, if you let RA equal to RB equal to just plain R and you let the moment of inertia of the pulley go to zero, you end up getting M minus M over M plus M times G, which is again the Atwood machine. So that gives us some confidence and that our answer is actually correct. Now on to page two, which is where we're gonna make use of these results and actually find out what our uh, tensions will be. So I have already that the, uh, Acceleration on the left-hand side is this. The acceleration on the right-hand side is this. All I have to do is look back at my original equations, one and two for TR. So for instance, uh, copying from equation two here, we can see TR is equal to M, lowercase m times G plus R, AR. So TR is equal to lowercase m, times G plus AR. And that's from equation two. So I'll write it as two prime. And now if I look at equation one, I can see TL is gonna be big M G minus big M A sub L. 
So uh, one prime is going to give me that TL is actually equal to M times G minus AL. So now that I can use those, I can also use the accelerations I got earlier, and I can work them out and find out what the tensions are. So finally, the tension on the right-hand side will be mg plus m times, now we're going to put in a sub r. Well, that's going to be m r a r b minus m r b squared over i plus m r b squared plus big m r a squared times g. So I can get a common denominator by taking basically m and multiplying it by this. So I'm going to get m times i plus m squared r b squared plus m m r a squared. So that's what the m is times each of these terms. Now I'm going to say plus, and I got to distribute this m through here. I'm going to say plus little m, big m, r a, r b, minus m times m b, little m squared, r b squared. All of that will be over that same common denominator, which is i plus m r b squared plus m r a squared and times g. So finally, I can say that the tension in the right-hand side is equal to, let's make some cancellations. I have a minus, I have a plus M, M, R, A squared, M, M, R, A, R, B, but I have a minus M squared, R, B squared, and a plus M squared, R, B squared. So these two cancel out. That's really the only simplification I got. So I have basically I times M, plus m m r a squared plus m m r a r b all that divided by i plus m r b squared plus big m r a squared times g and again, if you consider the case where I is zero and the R's are equal to each other, these R's up here are gonna cancel out. These I's are just gonna be zero. These R's up here are gonna cancel out with the R's down here. And you'll get two M M over M plus M times G, which is exactly the formula that we had for the Atwood machine in terms of the tension. It was just the product of the two masses times two divided by M plus M. So uh, times G, of course. Now I can do TL the same way. So you can see TL from up here, which is M times G minus AL. So I'm going to say that's MG minus M. Now put times the AL. Well, the AL is MRA squared minus M. R A R B over I M I plus M R B squared plus M R A squared times G. So we're going to get a common denominator like we did before. And this is going to become a big M times all this stuff. So I'll say big M I plus M big M R B squared plus M squared R A squared. Now I've got this little I'm going to distribute in there with the negative. So I get negative M squared R A squared and a negative and negative becomes a plus M M R A R B all that over I plus M R B squared plus big M R A squared times G. 
Now we look for cancellations. I see I have an M squared R A squared and a plus M squared R A squared. So they're going to cancel out. And lo and behold, I'm going to get T L is going to be equal to, writing it the same way I did before, I M in this case is big M. Actually, that looked really bad. I times big M plus M M R B squared plus M M R A R B over I plus M R B squared plus M R A squared all that times G. Now I've solved for just about everything. The only thing I really have left is of course the alpha and the alpha is easy peasy because we know that alpha is just AL over R for instance. We can go back and say alpha is equal to AL over RA. So alpha is equal to AL over R sub A. Well, if I look at AL as I have here, I can see that alpha is just going to be dividing that by RA, I'll get M RA minus M RB over I plus M RB squared plus big M RA squared, all that times G. And that's it. That's how you solve this particular problem. And those are all your answers. And just about fit them all on the page, just about. Maybe if it is like that, nope, nope, nope. So it's these accelerations. AL is the acceleration of the left hand side. AR is the acceleration of the right hand side. TR is attention on the right and TL is attention on the left. And then alpha is the angular acceleration. I hope that helps. That's it.